Welcome everybody to another episode of Vietnam Innovators. Thank you for tuning in every week in and out on our YouTube channel, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and of course our website, wherever you find uh, the show, Vietnam Innovators. Thank you for tuning in. Without your support, we wouldn't be able to invite the guests and the companies that we have on the show every single week. Um, before I start today's episode too, I just wanna give a big thanks to um, our partners and our kind of sponsors for making this season possible. Um, without you guys, uh, this show would not be happening. Um, today's guest is a great, uh, from, a, from a company of ours that's a great, a great friend of Vietc, uh, FPT, but specifically FPT Software. Uh, for those of you that don't know what FPT is, it's the largest uh, IT services company in all of Vietnam. And um, the FPT software division is a global one. It's not just here in Vietnam. It's actually got offices in US, Japan, even India of all places. Um, they have a lot of stories to share and tell about their global expansion. Uh, today's guest is the CEO of FPT software, uh, Antung. Thank you for coming in today. I know you're really busy and we're very lucky to have you because from what I understand, you're flying around the world most days. Uh, but of course, because of the COVID pandemic, you're, you're here in Vietnam. Um, welcome to the studio. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for uh, invitation. Of course. It's, uh, my pleasure to participate yes. in the show today. So, uh, Antung, so you're CEO of FPT Software, big name, big title, big responsibilities. <laughs> um, and you've been growing up with the company. I understand you've been there for 20, 25 years. Um, let's start with what you're doing now and how you got to, to where you are after 25 years with FPT. So I joined FPT since graduation. Mm. So FPT is uh, first love and only love yeah. uh, so far. But uh, like I grew up with FPT, mm. uh, different position, yeah. around uh, 15 position already. So I grew up from uh, working level like uh, as a developer. Mm. Uh, today is uh, uh, I am the CEO of FPT uh, Software. I, uh, my mission is to transform FPT software to uh, become a world class, a billion US dollar company mm -hmm. by 2023. So uh, people are very excited to uh, to to uh, like to support me mm. to transform the company and become very first uh, service company, uh, world class service company in the world. Excellent. I was quite excited to have you on the show today because there aren't a lot of Vietnamese companies that go global. There just aren't. And we're, we're seeing more of that now. You know, of course, companies like VinFast launching electric vehicles in the US, that's amazing. Uh, we're seeing all types of innovations go abroad. And, and you guys um, have been doing it for, for a very long time, but not a lot of people see it. So my, my first question for you is, I, I'd love to hear about the ups and downs of the company, you know, starting from 25 years ago. Um, I imagine when you guys started selling and sending teams abroad, people were like, what is Vietnam? Where is Vietnam? You guys do outsourcing. You guys provide IT services. What were the initial challenges of selling, not just FPT, but the Vietnam brand when you guys got started? So uh, really challenging uh, in the beginning. Nobody know about Vietnam, especially uh, young people. Uh, young people, they don't know Vietnam. Old people, they know Vietnam because of the war, but uh, young people, business people, they don't know. And we really struggling uh, in the beginning, uh, like uh, to be uh, survival or not. And uh, luckily, so after four years, uh, we break even, mm. and then uh, we grow up. We were recognized uh, by the world, and uh, nowadays uh, we we are one of the fastest grow company in FPT. Contribute uh, majorities. Uh, profit uh, of the corporation. What, what were some of the first countries you guys expanded to? Actually, uh, uh, the first country US, mm -hmm. but uh, after that, uh, the dot com happened. Mm. Yeah. And then we uh, switched to Japan and we gained the first success in Japan. And then Japan uh, became like uh, the largest market of FPT software nowadays. But recently, uh, US and Europe catch up uh, uh, very quickly. Now that we have like uh, three pillar, Japan, North America, and uh, Europe. Okay. Yeah. Amazing. I wanted to kind of ask you, you mentioned 25 years with the company, your first and only love to this day. Um, what's kept you at the company for so long, for 25 years? Yeah. You know, a lot of millennials, 
uh, Gen Z today, yeah. they leave companies after six months, one year, maximum five years. Why, why 25 years? Uh, to be honest, I don't know. But uh, like uh, when I work for APT, mm. uh, my feeling is I can be myself. Mm. I can do whatever I want to do. And uh, the APT leader allowed people mm -hmm. to do the job in the way. So they just give the mission and leave you like uh, freedom to, uh, to do uh, the job and to make achievement. So uh, I, uh, I've been with the company 25 years, but uh, in 15 different positions. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I believe is uh, experiment. I have a lot of experiments from work like uh, developer, project manager, product, manager of business development, customer management, when it's, it's about a work. And so about the culture, experiment from Vietnam, India, Japan, US, uh, Germany, France, Singapore, Malaysia, Australia, a lot of, a lot of experiment. So that's why I enjoy my life. And so like uh, my colleague, uh, we have lived up with our dream, like, uh, bring Vietnam intelligence to the world. So from beginning, nobody know about Vietnam, but nowadays uh, Vietnam is uh, one of the top 10 destination for software service. Were there any points in your career where you or the company was like, oh, this is too hard, you know, time to give up. <laughs> I'm sure there were plenty ah. of times, but how did you get through those, those points? To be, to be uh, honest, we never think of give up. Mm. But uh, uh, our manager, uh, our leader, our investor, <laughs> several times discussed about it mm. from 1999 to uh, 2004. So really difficult. And they discussed about whether to continue or stop. Uh, and luckily, uh, the final decision is go. Continue. So that's why. But uh, uh, we enjoy our business from beginning even during the difficult time, yeah. Uh, Anthony, you mentioned experimentation, never giving up. Those are core values for you as a leader and you as an employee for 25 years. Um, and I, I, I have on my uh, kind of briefs here and notes that you once said, if you want to work together, you have to play together. Um, is that the basic concept to build a company culture at FBT, would you say? And, and why is that? Sure. Uh... I, I study in Ho Chi Minh City, mm -hmm. but after graduation, I joined Abiti in Hanoi, mm. just because that reason. I had, uh, I had a chance to, uh, to play soccer with Abiti team in Hanoi. And right after the soccer match, we drink, we sing, we chat. Uh, I love that culture. I love that atmosphere. So I decided to leave Ho Chi Minh City. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why I, I, I believe that is also the thing young people really interested in buying. Uh, in the software, uh, we don't expect like a, 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 a star, a hero mm -hmm. to drive the company. But I believe the success comes from the teamwork. Mm -hmm. So that's why we always encourage to spread our spirit to the community. Yeah, to as many people as possible. So that's why playing together is a key weapon to build up the community, to build up the solid culture, to conquer the new challenge. Actually, throughout uh, my careers, any mission that never happened before. So any achievement, like uh, the very first time we achieved together, so that's why the culture is very important to support each other to overcome any difficulty and make a new record. You mentioned about uh, bringing a spirit together and making impact for the community. Um, let's talk about that uh, more specifically because um, technology has benefited so many lives mm. over the course you know, of the last one or two decades. Maybe you can share some examples of some projects or, or just the company, how they've helped to support 
maybe the community here or the community where your clients are. Um, of course, there's job creation, right? There are tens of thousands of jobs, maybe hundreds of thousands of people have uh, benefited. I, I'd love to hear your, your kind of thoughts about yeah, that. Yeah, there's a lot. There, there's a lot from very simple thing like uh, people have to travel. Mm -hmm. Anyways, no matter uh, uh, technology is, is so advanced, people still have to travel. And how you travel, how you enjoy the travel. So technologies help a lot. We developed some solution uh, for air travelers. So one of the nightmare of traveler is uh, lost luggage. <laughs> so you arrive uh, new country, strange country, and you know that you lost all the luggage. Mm. So uh, we develop an application so that the luggage, like your friend during the travel. So when you're on board, you know that your luggage and so on board. Mm. Or they are on the way to be loaded on aircraft. They text you the message. Mm -hmm. Or they, uh, they, uh, they, um, uh, they charge with you by your language. So like, uh, hi, are you on board? I'm on the way to the aircraft. Oh, hi, I'm already on the aircraft, have a nice flight. So, like the people release the, 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 the tension of the traveler and make sure nothing makes you surprised when you reach your destination. So, make you feel, feel more comfortable for the travelings. The second is about like uh, the healthcare. So, people enjoy the life a lot and they want to enjoy longer. So there are so many, so many things we can have the healthcare industry to make the life more comfortable. Uh, when incident happen, so what is the right solution, the right suggestion? For example, the simple thing for developing countries like uh, the, 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 the traffic accident mm -hmm. and maybe something happened to uh, the people brain and not everybody has enough condition for the treatment, like in Vietnam. So in uh, Mekong Delta River, if the accident is very serious, if people think to send you to Ho Chi Minh City. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, you have time or not. Or even when you reach Ho Chi Minh City, you are serious or not. You got the number of city limit. The number of city, uh, number of bed in uh, limit, mm -hmm. and if everyone come to Ho Chi Minh City, Ho Chi Minh City will be overloaded. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So the solution very simple: check like a city of your brain, mm -hmm. and the technologies just give you recommendation. This case serious or not? If you look at the appearance, at the symptom, maybe very serious, but inside it's no serious, and if you bring if we bring them to Ho Chi Minh City, it may make the situation worse. So we develop the solution, analyze the picture, and make the decision, send him to Ho Chi Minh or not. Or he can be treated locally. And then we expand to some other areas. Chronic disease, like uh, cardiology, heart attack so so many like uh, disease you have to visit hospital very often nowadays it takes around four hours from Mekong Delta River to Ho Chi Minh City queue for three hours it's too long and then only five minutes mm. for examination mm. waste a lot of times and we develop like a tele telehealth care system so that's for like a repeating you need them to go to Ho Chi Minh City. Let's talk about the more recent uh, business climate, of course, with the pandemic uh, forcing businesses to really look at digital transformation. I'm sure you guys do a lot of those projects for your clients. Um, have you had to do that for the company as well? Have you sure, had to transform sure. how your internal processes work, You know, working from home? Was that a thing you did before? I mean, you were a global company, so you're very used to telecommuting. Um, but I'd love to hear how you guys went through that period and have you guys come out stronger 
as a result as well. Um, what's happened to FPT so far? Uh, there's a lot of story like uh, uh, during pandemic, people have more time, stay at home, mm -hmm. no community activities, no drinking. And if you have free time, maybe you do something bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we help people mm -hmm. spend their times for better life or more like a contribution. Mm -hmm. So like uh, we develop the platform so that everybody can contribute to the grow up company or even to grow up the social by the way, by using the free time. So nowadays, like uh, around 10% uh, of our people can increase the income by spending extra time at home for the work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the first thing. The second thing is not related to the pandemic, but the when company grow, like uh, the bureaucracy in increase. Mm. And the f some, somehow people feel exhausted with the process, with the control, with so many, so many things uh, uh, very strict. So we use digital transformation to reduce the, the friction among different function. We, we call like a cross function pain point. Use technology to solve the cross function pain point to make uh, the company more agile, more lean. Mm -hmm. So that is not like uh, make any obstacle to the growth of the company. How do you guys think about um, innovation internally? So of course you guys have uh, been able to execute these things, but do you guys have a culture where, um, like, do you hire folks that have that innovation mindset, would you say? Uh, and what are some traits that you look for? In, in uh, we do both. Uh, we have some people like uh, have a tall leadership mm -hmm. and uh, uh, spread their spirit to other people. Like uh, young people, they, can, they can't live without innovation, I believe. Or they feel uh, quickly is a bore mm. if they, they do something repeat a routine. Mm. So that's why in innovation in our life, and we try to do innovation through the daily activities. So we always ask what you can do better tomorrow, how we can increase our productivities tomorrow, or how younger people, the fresher, mm -hmm. can do the same at us today. Mm -hmm. So. A lot of like uh, problems we uh, brainstorm, discuss together, and innovate, innovation come very naturally. Yeah. How do you how do you encourage that uh, kind of mindset across twenty six countries? Uh, like I was mentioning earlier, uh, you guys are one of the few companies in Vietnam to grow so, so large globally. How have you managed to maintain and grow that culture of innovation? thinking about, um, you know, I guess like sharing that, uh, that thinking across 26 offices, w what were some challenges you had? I mean, especially when you opened Japan or, or, you know, before we started this episode, we were talking about your first experience in India. I'd love to hear about that as well. <laughs> How did you maintain that company culture and grow it? Uh, uh, interesting question. Let's start with the India story, something a little fun, something a little light. Um, uh, actually, I think young people around the world are very similar. Mm -hmm. So when they grow up, so they will they, they have to follow the local culture. But when they are young, so they are very similar. So good things, uh, uh, most of our people are still very young. Mm -hmm. So they are uh, like uh, easily adaptive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like uh, uh, we not force our people to do something. Mm -hmm. So they feel comfortable, they will follow. If they don't feel comfortable, they will stop. So the principle of our culture, be yourself. Mm -hmm. So that's why we still maintain like a company culture, unique company culture, but accept the diversific uh, uh, diversification. So Japan, uh, for example, like uh, in Japan, we still have to follow uh, Japan uh, practice, mm -hmm. uh, business manner. But like uh, after working hour, we are like human. Mm -hmm. We drink together, we sing together, we can say any, anything we are uh, in our mind uh, without, uh, like, uh, without any risk. <laughs> yeah. 
So, uh, like uh, our core value uh, is uh, experiment, working experiment about the fun, work for fun or fund to work better, and about care. We care each other. We, the manager have to care his employees throughout the, uh, the company. Mm -hmm. We care not only about uh, uh, the work, about the compensation, about the feeling, but we also care for the family. Like in APT, we have a lot of uh, program to sponsor or subsidize uh, employees to buy uh, uh, for accommodation, for car, for travelings, for schools. There, there, there are so many programs, and uh, to uh, like uh, try to make our people just focus on the work. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about. Everything else. Everything else. So, so when we come and we bring our culture very natural, so people get uh, like uh, uh, get familiar right, very, very quickly because it's very uh, like uh, similar for young for young people for young people around the world, and the, the other thing is. Uh, we want to educate our people to become the global citizens. So we travel, we exchange people. Mm. So we recruit, uh, recruit people in Europe, send them to Vietnam, mm. and we send Vietnamese people to Europe. So the culture exchange is very important. In these offices, like in Japan, Europe, and India, do we see a lot of Vietnamese working in those offices? Sure. Typically, yes. Like what percentage usually? So, uh, more than 50 percent five zero yes okay so if i were to go to the tokyo office 50 percent of the staff would be vietnamese 50 percent would be japanese that's incredible that's 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 awesome nowadays to see. we have yeah. three thousand foreigners wow. in our company okay yeah and you were mentioning earlier i mean this was a long time ago but some of them uh when you were doing interviews uh some of them might not know where vietnam was yeah. i mean they're, they're obviously attracted to the the company brand because you guys are leaders in in what you do, but not a lot of people know about what is Vietnam. What does Vietnam stand for? Let's 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 talk about that. Um, when you first started expanding the the company globally, and even today, perhaps, what are the first thoughts that people think of Vietnam twenty years ago versus today? What were some big changes? Nothing special. They asked me, is, uh, is "The war still there?" <laughs> the war is still there, really. <laughs> they don't know that we already wow. united. We already finished the war for yes. many years. So, uh, nothing. But, uh, Do we talk about Vietnamese food? <laughs> no, no. No, really? No, I don't. Yeah, <laughs> no, I don't. So, uh, but uh, like uh, we, uh, uh, we trained them uh -huh. uh, on the Vietnamese cuisine. Yeah. Uh, everyone to go abroad, they cook very well. So, uh, that's the. Uh, it's an important weapon mm -hmm. to uh, like uh, to get along with yes. the local people. Yeah, yeah. There, there, there are some funny story. So the first is about uh, interviews uh, one hundred uh, Indian people mm -hmm. to become uh, LPT uh, employees. Yes. So I asked two questions. The first question is, uh, uh, do you know Vietnam? And uh, ninety nine people say no. Mm. <laughs> Only one people say yes. And I'm very happy to, to ask the second question, you know, where is it? Mm -hmm. He replied, in North America. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> and I said, why not America? He said that only North America company opened branch in India at that time, 1999. Wow. The second story is with Japan. Mm -hmm. So, we came to Japan, we make a very normal presentation, no impressive at all, and a big uh, a big company at that time, the Hitachi Software, they have no feeling about APT. Mm -hmm. But uh, Japan, Japanese people are very polite. They don't say anything. Mm -hmm. And, okay, we finished the meeting. We went to the hotel without any uh, hope yeah. <laughs> for doing business with Hitachi Software. Mm. But uh, one people, have idea. So invite the customer to the dinner. Yeah. 
is actually the, the, the main uh, in Japan. The dinner is uh, very popular, mm. and they accept. You know, during the dinner, we APT people sing APT song, and just because of that song, Hitachi Saf gave us a try. Mm. Later on, when we have like a business around thousand people with them, I asked the president, "So why you decide to go with APT?" He said that when you sing. I see the teamwork. Mm. Like everyone can sing a song very well. It means there's teamwork behind. So that's why I gave you a try. And you did a good job for the trial. Amazing. And then is this. So a Japanese yeah. client said that. Japanese client. Oh, fantastic. The, yeah. the very first Japanese mm. client, Itachi. And just because of singing a song. Mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, I. And then I, I believe. Yeah, then I believe. The team How will long be ago very was important. that? 2005? 2002. 2002. Okay. 2002. Mm. <laughs> so, and then uh, we know that when we come to any countries, mm -hmm. we need to come with our honesty, uh, transparency. That, that's a great lesson to learn, especially for people um, that are introducing themselves to a market, introducing themselves to a new new um, client base and new kind of people. Japanese people are very different from Vietnamese, right? Yeah. Um, they're, uh, I mean, play is one thing, but like more quiet. I guess. They try to hide themselves. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, but Vietnamese are very yeah, like, open. Uh, like to go out there and show And these. nowadays still a lot of uh, old people, Japanese mm -hmm. people work uh, with APT. They said that uh, we work not only, not because of the money, but we work with young people and we feel younger. Mm -hmm. So, like uh, we, uh, they enjoy the life mm -hmm. when working with APT. Yeah, they like APT spirit. Mm -hmm. They like the culture of Vietnamese people, and they said that when working with uh, with uh, with APT, they feel they were around thirty years ago. Wow! So it's like going back in time. And you're excited. That's yeah. great. Uh, so Antong, um, you mentioned earlier that you have a vision for FPT to be this world-class global company. And by some standards, you already are. You are a global company, 26 countries, 50 offices, something like that. Yeah. Um, but my question is, how do you make it uh, a billion dollar company? How do you, what is the next chapter for, for FPT software? Not only to hit that goal and to maintain its world-class standard, but what else do you have to do to, um, in the next chapter for the company? So uh, we are uh, in the journey of transformation. Actually, the one billion target is not very far. Mm. Yeah, not very far. So we, we are going to reach by uh, next two years. Mm -hmm. But the world class is different. We not only about the number, but about like uh, the, 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 the qualification or the reputation. Uh, for many years, uh, we doing like uh, normal normal work, but nowadays we are supporting our customer to do transformation, business transformation, and it's not a simple work anymore. Mm. Yeah, and we have to provide like end to end solution, end to end service. So you have to be an expert in their industry as well. They just give us the problem. Yeah, we have to help them to solve the problem. From business perspective, yeah. technology is perspective, and even people transformation. Mm. So nowadays, we are doing transformation in three pillars. Business transformation, IT transformation, and people transformation. So normally, we have to transform their people first. Otherwise, the technologies can be there, but nobody use. So it sounds like you're moving from this IT outsourcing software development from 20 plus years ago. And over time, the demand has become more of a holistic transformation. Yeah, uh, luckily is uh, um, we are young people. We're not busy with the legacy system. Mm -hmm. So most of our people work in modern technologies mm. and modern technologies is the right technologies for transformation. So that's why every transformation requires a lot of new technologies and we quite advanced because we not stick with the legacy. 
Mm-hmm. And that's like the just precondition. But the enough condition is uh, we, we, we uh, transform our customer using the latest, latest technologies to make them more competitive, to make, uh, to make them more agilities. And uh, the final outcome is a business transformation. Yeah. So business transformation is our target. Yeah. It's the customer target. Mm-hmm. And together, we uh, make things happen. Excellent. Antong, we're near the end of our episode here today. Thank you for joining Vietnam Innovators. It's been a pleasure learning about FPT's history and what it wants to be doing uh, for the years to come. Um, my final question for you would be about uh, hiring. I'm sure you guys are hiring hundreds of employees, maybe thousands even. Um, what kind of, uh, let's focus on Vietnam and then talk about who you're, what kind of people you're hiring internationally too. But here in Vietnam, uh, what kind of people are you looking for to join FPT software? Every, everyone has asp- uh, aspiration to, uh, to be success. You know, the number, I give you some number. So this year, we recruited 9,000 people. Mm. And then in Vietnam? Worldwide. Global. But the majority in Vietnam. Mm-hmm. The number two company, software company in Vietnam, are about 3,000. Mm. So for one year, we recruit nearly three uh, number two company in Vietnam. Yeah. And our uh, philosophy is that we think global but act local locally it means we have to leverage the local talent for our international business so when we operate our business in us we need to leverage the us talent when we operate in japan we leverage japanese talent mm. happen everywhere in the world 26 countries and we believe that the numbers I mean, the local talent should contribute at least 30% of our employees. So that's why the people enjoy a lot mm-hmm. to, to see how company uh, developed and how we integrate different culture into FPT culture for the su- sustainable growth and rapid growth. But uh, no matter the final outcome, as long as everyone enjoy the journey with FPT. That's more important. Amazing. Well, coming from the words of the CEO who's been with the company for 25 years, hopefully our audience and listeners can take away some insights and learnings from him today. Um, Antung, thank you so much for joining uh, another episode of Vietnam Innovators. Uh, it's a pleasure to learn about the history, the values of FPT software, and I wish the company the best of luck over the years to come to hit those goals. World-class company, uh, billion dollars, and of course, um, kind of cultivating the next generation of Vietnamese talent, so uh, globally as well. Thank you, Antong, and um, we look forward to hopefully having you or your future team members on the show uh, at, an, uh, at a later time. It was my pleasure to uh, join the show, and I hope that I can share my dream with uh, a lot of young people worldwide, yes. and together we make our life better. Awesome. Thank you everyone for tuning in for another episode of Vietnam Innovators. We'll see you next week. FPT Software prizes itself as the leading IT company in ASEAN. With 57 branches in 26 countries and territories globally, industry awards have named FPT as a great place to work and a best place to work given its safe, open, fair, and personalized workplaces. As pioneers in digital transformation, FPT Software delivers world-class services with advanced technology in areas such as smart factories, automation, AI, Internet of Things, big data, enterprise mobility, cloud, AR, VR, application services, and more. Check out the Vietnam Innovators series on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. And don't forget to subscribe to listen to other innovative stories in Vietnam. Hey guys, good news. Vietcetera has now officially rolled out a mobile app for Android. Now you can download our mobile app on both the Apple iOS store and the Google Play store right now. More functions are coming very soon, so stay on the lookout.